Welcome back, casual gardeners. We've all needed to clear lawn in order to start a new garden bed. So this video is going to be all about some methods I've tried or am trying to do that. Also, toward the end of the video, I'm going to talk about everything that's gone wrong so far this year. There's your drama. When I wanted to clear space in my first in-ground garden, I tried a couple of different methods. The first method I tried was I killed off all of the lawn where I wanted my garden bed with an herbicide. Then I manually tilled it in and that was my garden bed. And that actually works okay, but it's really labor intensive. And now I know that when I do that, I am shredding that soil structure on the top layer. Another method I used primarily for creating flower beds is I actually cut all the sod out and made a big sod pile in my backyard. And then I put compost down where the sod used to be and mulch on top of that and planted my flowers in. That is even more labor intensive. <laughs> it was crazy, but I did it and it worked. When I built and filled my raised beds, I, I leveled the ground a little bit, but that's all I did. And then I actually, I had to cut sod for my greenhouse to build the foundation. So all of that sod I cut in my greenhouse wound up turned upside down at the bottoms of my raised beds because sod has amazing qualities. Your sod is going to be your loamiest soil in your garden. Do not discard it. It's good stuff. That's what you want to grow in. So there are some cons to doing that though. When you throw just down a foot of soil on top of perennials, they don't die. I had irises and alliums and of course bindweed and all of the perennial weeds and all of the non-weed perennials that then became weeds just came up through that foot of soil I'd thrown down on top of them and I'm weeding them out of my garden beds now. That's just a fact of life. No. Where I'm standing right here it looked a lot better before the deer kicked it up. This is sheet mulching. So what I've done here is I did not do anything to the lawn. First I laid out the steel edging and that is 100% optional. I had it lying around from the previous owner who hadn't installed it very well, so I repurposed it. So it was for free, free to me. My next step is I had some cardboard boxes that I'd been hoarding. I ripped all the plastic tape off of them because if you don't rip the tape off, it's just going to come up in your beds later and be gross and plastically. Then I laid a double layer of the cardboard down in my designated garden area. Then on top of that, because I'd been having a no mow May, I mowed all of my lawns and I piled all of the grass clippings on top of the cardboard. Then because grass clippings are prone to blowing away, I took some arborist wood chips and I piled them on top of that and spread them out evenly. And I've watered this and I've kept it watered really well to help all of these materials break down. So there are some pros and cons to sheet mulching. Pro is you're not disrupting any soil structure. It's intact. That beautiful loam that happened under your lawn is still there. So that's great. Also, Compared to cutting the sod or tilling the sod in, this is pretty low effort. I just piled things on top of it. There are some cons though. If you put cardboard over soil, especially a double layer of cardboard like, cardboard like I did, you are smothering the soil. All of the modern cardboard has been treated, which means it's not terribly gas permeable. Everything under my cardboard is suffocating right now. I am killing a lot of important soil organisms or forcing them to relocate, but I'm also killing the lawn. Another con is that because modern cardboard has been treated to be less water permeable so that when our UPS shipment gets caught in the rain, it's not a melted mess by the time it gets to our house, it's going to take over a year for the cardboard itself to break down in this area. Now the other method of clearing lawn for extra garden space that I'm trying this year is tarping. This tarp is going to be here for all of this year and through the winter 
and into the spring. It's probably not going to do a great job killing or blocking perennial weeds, but it's going to starve them a lot. And it is going to eventually kill off the lawn that's under this tarp, which means that this area will be a usable garden bed for me to do whatever I want with. Pros are very similar to the pros with the sheet mulching. I'm not removing the lawn, so all of the leaf blades and roots and beautiful loamy soil are retained for use in the garden later on. So those are some methods that you can use to clear out lawn and turn it into garden space. Um, of course, there are many more methods. If you have a favorite method that I did not talk about in this video, I would love for you to share that in the comments. So let's talk about what's gone wrong this year. It's a longer list than I would like. My spring planting went horribly wrong. That's it. There are a number of factors at play there. Part of it's my fault. I'm used to growing one USDA hardiness zone higher than here. And so I put things in earlier than I should have. That actually wouldn't have been a big problem. This has been a more mild winter and spring than is typical for this area, but it was mild on average. We've had a lot of cold snaps come through here. So it got very cold and then warmed back up and then got very cold and then warmed back up. And then a heat dome moved in over the southwest and we're catching the shrapnel from that. We're not directly under the heat dome. This is a small mountain valley. We're maxing out in the 90s, which compared to the Salt Lake Valley, where roads are literally buckling from the heat, isn't bad. Next week, temperatures are going to drop again. We're going to get nighttime lows in the low 40s and possibly down into the high 30s again. So all of this temperature swing that's going on has induced bolting in most of my spring crops. Most of my onions skipped past the growing phase and tried to bolt and but they weren't mature enough to even do that so they just failed and died. My tatsoi has bolted. I got two harvests off my lettuce and now it's bolting. A lot of my beets failed for the same reason. They, they skipped the growing stage of their life and went straight to trying to bolt, but because they weren't mature enough, they just kind of fizzled out and died. <laughs> it's been bad. I've had extensive chill damage to my basil. I'm, I'm looking forward to more chill damage on my basil next week and possibly some chill damage on my peppers. So that's everything that's gone wrong so far. And mostly it's not my fault. Mostly it's just, the crazy schizophrenic spring we've been having in my area. And then also I've got another problem coming up in the summer, and that is that the ridiculous number of grasshoppers that were present in the valley last, last year are going to do a repeat performance for us. It's, it's going to be epic for, for them and for everything that eats them. Let me tell you, the grasshoppers here, uh, we're still because we're cooler here and we run behind everyone else, we don't have a lot of adults yet. I did see an adult grasshopper yesterday, but most of the grasshoppers here are still in their nymph stage. And that means they're, they're tiny, but there are so many already. As I walk past um, weedy patches along the sidewalk, I can hear a hiss, just, it's like a hiss. There are so many nymphs jumping through the the underbrush that you can't hear the individual landings anymore. You just hear a, it's like shh through the weeds. So I'm a little bit terrified about um, how that's going to go in my garden. I did buy some insect netting to go over most of my beds. And theoretically, that was a good idea, but I bought my insect netting on Amazon and it, it was glorified tool. And that meant that it started to fall apart a week after I'd installed it. And after two weeks, it had holes large enough for grasshoppers to jump through. Useless. That was a complete loss of 20 bucks. So the moral of the story is do not buy insect netting off Amazon unless you're going to use it indoors. 
if you're going to use insect netting outdoors, pay five times as much and get it from a reputable vendor because it's worth five times as much. I would love it if you let me know in the comments what problems you're having in your gardens. Gardening is never without some sort of problem. And I think sharing our problems is a really great way for us to help each other understand that we are not failures. We are just living in a world where we're not the only thing that's going on. There are other organisms that are trying to survive as well. There is wacky wild weather that can happen and all of this can just ruin our plans. As of today, as I'm making this video, I only need 20 more subscribers to get to a thousand. So if you're still watching, that means you liked my video. You might as well hit subscribe because there's just going to be more and you might like those too. If you hit the little bell, you'll get notifications that will tell you when I've made another one, usually weekly, usually on Mondays. As always, thank you for joining me here in my garden. And I hope you have a wonderful time in your own.